Have you ever fantasized about waking up one day to find the apocalypse has arrived, so you'll never have to go to work again? Well, this dream becomes a reality for Akira. Akira is an ambitious young man who had just entered the workforce, full of hope for his future. Unfortunately, he unknowingly landed a job at a heartless company. On his first day, he's asked to work overtime through the night. He thought it was a one-time thing but soon realized that it's an everyday occurrence. Even going home became a luxury, with all his basic needs met at the company. The relentless work and constant abuse from his supervisor slowly erode Akira's spirit. Hopeless and worn down, he even contemplates ending it all. But fate has other plans for him. One morning, he notices that his neighbor has turned into a movie-like zombie. Reacting quickly, Akira runs upstairs only to find that everyone in his building has turned as well, and they're all hot on his heels. As Akira runs, checking the time, he realizes that being late for work is more terrifying to him than zombies. He sprints to the rooftop, climbs over the fence just before the zombie horde reaches him, and watches a burning Boeing 747 fly overhead. The city is in ruins, filled with horrifying scenes of zombies devouring people. The apocalypse has truly arrived. But Akira isn't afraid. In fact, he's thrilled. Nothing could be scarier than his job, after all. After an entire year without a day off, Akira finally has time to himself. He can do whatever he wants, and even better, his crush from work has sent him a text saying she needs him. It's like a double blessing. Excited and eager to meet his female co-worker, Akira scrambles down a drainage pipe, promising a bewildered couple on the way that he'll bring back supplies for them. Riding a bicycle with a joyful smile, Akira quickly reaches his co-worker's apartment building, even with a horde of zombies on his tail. Upon entering, his co-worker fearfully embraces him, and Akira thinks love has finally arrived. But it's a zombie in the apartment, not romance, that caused her fear. What's more, the zombie is none other than their boss, hinting at some kind of unusual relationship. Akira tells his co-worker to escape, but her foot appears to be injured. To protect her, he charges at the zombie, inadvertently ripping off the boss's wig. He uses the wig to block the zombie's gaping mouth, but is thrown across the room. Regaining his footing, Akira gets into an attack stance. As a former college rugby player, he has extraordinary speed and strength. Using the wig, he slams the zombie into submission, and his co-worker delivers the killing blow. However, just as Akira thinks the danger has passed, he sees his co-worker collapse and begin to convulse. She had been bitten by the boss earlier, and now she slowly rises, having completely turned into a zombie. Heartbroken at seeing his crush like this, Akira takes the chance to confess his feelings before tearfully leaving the scene. He climbs back home through the pipes but finds the couple from earlier gone, their room left in disarray with only bloodstains remaining. Their fate seems grim. Returning home, Akira looks at the food he brought back for the couple and thinks of his co-worker turned zombie, feeling a pang of sadness. Perhaps this fate will befall him. Determined not to have any regrets before he becomes a zombie, Akira decides to fulfill 100 wishes and records them in a notebook. From confessing to his crush to dyeing his hair or soaking in a hot spring, each wish gets crossed off as he completes it. Though these may seem mundane to others, for Akira, they were once unattainable dreams. The next morning, Akira springs into action. First on his list is cleaning his home, followed by a trip to the supermarket for a zero-dollar haul grabbing food he normally wouldn't indulge in. Then he heads to the barbers for a dye job, and finally, he rides a Harley motorcycle back home. In a single day, he completes several wishes. But after the thrill, Akira feels a tinge of loneliness, wishing he had someone to share these moments with. Looking at a photo on his table, he thinks of his college friend Kenichiro and gives him a call. Luckily, Kenichiro is still alive, but unfortunately, he's trapped in a hotel, surrounded by zombies in the hallways, making escape impossible. Akira immediately promises to rescue him, then heads out on his Harley. Zombies are everywhere, lunging at him, with three even grabbing onto the back of the bike. Akira shakes them off with a drift and continues on. Riding through the night, he finally reaches the destination, only to find even more zombies. Prepared, Akira tosses a Bluetooth speaker into the horde and plays music from his phone, attracting most of the zombies. He then puts on his college sports gear and bravely charges through. Despite the many zombies, Akira's physical prowess sees him through. Inside, 
Kinichiro notices the sudden quiet and thinks to escape, only to run into Akira. The zombies discover them, and after a chase, they escape to the rooftop. There, Kinichiro cooks a lavish meal for them, a feast amidst the apocalypse. But with the city center swarming with zombies, they know they can't stay long. After some discussion, they decide to head to an aquarium in the suburbs, where it's safer, and there's plenty of seafood. The next morning, they set out but realize they need ample supplies for the journey. Just as they open a store shutter, they notice a bus full of survivors forced to stop nearby. As the zombies surround the bus, panic ensues, and the survivors scatter, only to be brought down by the zombies one by one. Akira sees that there are survivors and motions for them to run toward him. With their help, three survivors make it to the safety of the store. But as Akira is about to enter, he notices a woman trapped by zombies. With the zombie horde closing in, he and Kenichiro call to her, and they all manage to enter the store just in time. Unbeknownst to them, one of the survivors, a security guard, has been bitten by a zombie but chooses not to reveal it. Two women in the group decide to have a drink to calm their nerves and invite Akira and Kenichiro to join them. Unable to resist the invitation from two beautiful flight attendants, Akira is especially thrilled, as drinking with flight attendants was on his list of 100 wishes. However, his lack of experience with women leads to embarrassment, and he ends up being the butt of everyone's jokes. In his moment of embarrassment, Akira turns to find that Kenichiro has become the center of attention, causing him to feel envious. Feeling left out and even a nuisance, Akira is left alone as the others decide to move to another location for more private conversation. Fortunately, another woman, Shizuka, returns from her patrol, providing Akira with someone to talk to. Unlike the others, she is more concerned about safety and always remains vigilant. Unexpectedly, the security guard on the floor suddenly turns into a zombie. Akira and Shizuka react quickly, but the pursuing zombie stops in its tracks, drawn by the sounds of Kenichiro and the flight attendants playing a role-playing game. As the flight attendants are helping Kenichiro with a pretend flight takeoff, the zombie appears and attacks one of them. Initially thinking the security guard is just misbehaving, they pull him off only to realize he's become a zombie. The other flight attendant is attacked, and a terrified Kenichiro turns and runs. The situation quickly worsens as the two flight attendants also turn into zombies, and there's nowhere to hide in the store. At a critical moment, Kenichiro lights fireworks to distract the zombies, and the three of them seize the opportunity to escape. They find a motorhome and finally leave the area, deciding to head to the aquarium. Since the journey is long, they decide to have fun along the way, and Akira manages to fulfill several of his wishes, such as paragliding and soaking in a hot spring. After a few days of travel, they finally reach the aquarium, only to have a sudden tire blowout. The vehicle crashes, and Akira is knocked unconscious, discovering that someone had purposely placed nails in the road. When he wakes up, he's surprised to see his former boss, who has also come to the aquarium. It turns out that the boss is responsible for the nails and has turned the aquarium into a safe zone, setting himself up as the leader. Shockingly, the old company's management system is still in place, and to get food, everyone must work for him. Even in the apocalypse, Akira can't escape his work life, and both Kenichiro and Shizuka have already started working. The boss takes Akira outside and shows him the aquarium's security system, a horde of zombies. With these zombie guards, no one dares to raid the place. Even zombies are working, why shouldn't you? Think about your companions, the boss says. With abundant supplies and the promise of safety, Akira reluctantly accepts his fate. However, reality proves harsh. The bosses enjoy lavish meals, while ordinary employees, like Akira, are stuck with emergency rations. Akira also finds himself at the beck and call of his superiors. Unexpectedly, disaster strikes when an employee returning from scavenging accidentally lets a zombie into the vehicle. As soon as the car door is opened, the employee is attacked. The noise attracts the zombie guards, and soon, a horde invades the aquarium, turning it into a zombie playground. Some zombies even fall into the shark tank and are eaten by sharks. Led by Akira, the remaining survivors narrowly escape the zombie attack, only to find the whole venue suddenly shaking. Just as everyone is stunned by the situation, a shark suddenly leaps from the water, killing a lucky spectator on the spot. To everyone's horror, it's not just any shark, it's a zombie shark. Everyone is petrified and turns to run. Only Shizuka seems unfazed, 
pointing out that no matter how ferocious a shark might be, it's helpless on land. But no sooner have the words left her mouth than they see the shark sprouting numerous human legs, becoming an amphibious terror. Now everyone's panicking, and they scramble to escape. But the shark crashes through a wall, blocking their way. They hide in a nearby storage room, but the boss doesn't make it in time, and his noise attracts the zombie shark's attention. Akira realizes the boss is in danger and decides to rescue him, despite the boss's contempt for him. He can't just stand by and watch him get eaten, especially when there's a shark-proof suit in the storage room. Just as the boss is about to be devoured, Akira, wearing the shark-proof suit, arrives in the nick of time. He kicks the zombie shark over and attempts to take it head-on, thinking he's invincible in the suit. But he quickly finds himself overpowered. To make matters worse, the desperate boss lets more zombies in and abandons Akira. Luckily, the zombies are only interested in the boss. Kenichiro arrives in a forklift, and Akira, struggling free, leaves the zombie shark to him. They think the forklift will give them a fighting chance, but it's quickly overwhelmed. Kenichiro has to abandon it and jumps into the building through a hole in the wall just as the zombie shark gets stuck. But the crisis isn't over. The boss's zombies surround Akira, and while the shark suit can withstand bites, it can't prevent pain. Fortunately, Shizuka arrives with a loudspeaker to distract the zombies, leading them to plunge into the water. With all the zombies taken care of, the boss finally comes out from hiding, praising the three of them while still maintaining his air of authority. Even the zombie shark stuck in the hole seems disgusted by this display, and its massive impact knocks the boss unconscious. Akira rushes over to check, only to become the new target of the zombie shark. Akira quickly grabs a piece of wood in an attempt to resist, but it's useless. His right hand is bitten and held firmly. The quality of the protective suit is indeed good, but if this continues, he won't be bitten to death but will be shaken to death. Just then, Shizuka has a brilliant idea. She takes out batteries from her flashlight, planning to electroshock the shark. Sharks use sensors to locate their prey, so if she can shock it, its sensors might be disabled. Although they're unsure if it'll work, it's the only option they have. Since Akira's shark-proof suit conducts electricity, they need to get the batteries to him. Akira finally frees himself, and they quickly explain the plan. But the next second, the zombie shark sends Akira flying. Kinichiro quickly throws the batteries to Akira but gets hit by the shark himself. Fortunately, Akira catches the batteries. Seeing Kinichiro down, Akira becomes enraged. He rushes at the shark with the batteries clenched in his fist, landing a heavy blow on the zombie shark's nose. The method works brilliantly, and the zombie shark stops moving. With the crisis averted, the survivors prepare to leave with supplies, but are confronted by the boss. This time, however, they don't back down. They've seen the boss's selfishness, how he cared only for himself, leading them to die. Such a man doesn't deserve to be a leader. They all drive away, leaving the boss to fend for himself. Akira and the other two continue on a new path to survival. Each of them has their own dreams to fulfill, and they resolve to achieve them together in this post-apocalyptic world.